Hello, my name is Rob Kiniston and I farm here at Great Wollaston Farm in Shropshire where I have uh, dairy cows and some arable land. Given the importance of NVZs and the Water Framework Directive, it is critical we get nutrient management right. And that's where the tried and tested nutrient management plan comes in. There are four key steps to this. The first is estimating the nutrient supply from the soil, then working out the crop requirement. After that, you have to work out any nutrients supplied from organic manures that you apply to the land, and finally, what you need in inorganic fertilizers to top up for the crop requirement. Looking at these steps in more detail, working out what is available in the soil, it's very important to have regular soil tests done to work out your phosphates and potassium levels, the pH of the soil and even micronutrients. Then you can use reference materials such as RB209 for the crop requirement and also using RB209 as a reference for working out the available amounts of N, P and K within your organic manures. In conjunction with the tried and tested sheets and if you need help, a fax qualified uh, advisor, you can then look at what is needed in inorganic fertilizer to be applied to the crop. So now we've looked at the planning and now we're going outside to look at the field situation and soil structure. So now we're out in the field and on one of the grass fields that I'm going to be using for a first cut of silage and then I graze this field uh, for the cows later in the season. So it's been grazed now and we've just been digging a hole to actually look at the soil structure and also at what's growing within the grass. This has got a good high clover content um, with some grass. Clover can put up to 170 kilograms of nitrogen into the soil. This will also need other nutrients that I provide during the year. Not only the nitrogen that the clover has put in, so there'll be slurries and inorganic fertilizers that we will put on to meet those nutrient requirements that we've worked out in the kitchen beforehand. If the crop is grown really well, it's healthy, it will take up those nutrients and you'll get optimum production from your grassland. And there's a good root structure going through this. This soil is well rooted, so there's plenty of organic matter and worms as well. Uh, there isn't much of a pan. The cows have been grazing this and their feet can actually compact the surface of the soil and cause the rest of the soil to be anaerobic. Um, we can remedy this with a soil slotter. So this is a good example, I hope it's a good example, of uh, good sward, good rooting, but it also needs the right nutrients. So we've got a soil test this field um, in a Y pattern, so zigzag across the field taking soil samples and then we can actually see what this soil contains and that will help us um, as we've seen in the office in the house earlier on uh, what this soil actually needs for nutrients. This is where I store all my slurries. We're on a slatted system with the storage underneath the slats. When I was in the office we were looking at uh, the organic manures going on the ground and we were using the RB209 standard values for the nitrogen, uh, phosphorus and potassium contained within these slurries. I have to make a slight adjustment to these because of that's done at a standard moisture content and so it's quite important to know the moisture content of your slurry so that you can adjust the, the quantities up or down accordingly. It's also important when you're thinking about spreading it to have an idea how much you're putting on, either have a counter in the tractor so you know the quantities going on. We use a slurry tanker here with the, to spread the slurry on the ground. 
with a downward uh, facing plate. So it, instead of spraying the slurry up into the air, it spreads it straight down onto the ground. This is a very, very important nutrient for this farm. It's very low cost, has a lot of good nutrients in it for the farm, and it's, so it reduces my bought-in fertilizer bill. We've looked at the slurry storage here, which in this case was under slats, but it could have been in a lagoon or an above-ground tank. But then there's other manures we've got to store, the solid straw-based manures, uh, that don't have free flow of liquid from them and in this case it's on a concrete yard with a tank to catch any runoff from it but it could be in a temporary field heap uh, if you're in an NVZ those can only be used for a maximum of 12 months and not return to the same site within two years with fields temporary field heaps they're very useful because they can be on the field of application so that there won't be much uh, haulage to do when you come to sp spread the manure on that field. So we've looked at what the crop requires, what's available. We've been out in the field, checked the soils, we've looked at the organic manures we've got available and now we're coming down to actually applying what we need to put on. If we're putting on slurry we have to make sure we know how much we're putting on. So we can count loads of slurry out onto the field and then adjust the quantities we need to actually top up for optimum uh, crop growth uh, for the organic, inorganic fertilizers we'll need. And we need to calibrate our spinners and spreaders for the inorganic as well. So doing a uh, tray spread test um, for each material that you'll be using in with nitrogen fertilizer you can have a difference of 20 percent in the spreading pattern without any visible effects so you can be putting the total amount on that you think but it could be going on in different amounts in different parts of the field so you won't get the yield response that you're expecting also when you're coming to actually spread the fertilizer especially with a spinner is to check tire pressures don't want them too high. High tire pressures will damage the soils and the soil structure. And also you want them even. If you've got several tons or in a spinner on the back of a tractor and the tire pressures are different, the tractor will tilt slightly onto the less inflated tire and so your spreading pattern will not be even. This again will affect crop growth. So all the planning is about using nutrients efficiently. It's about saving money and getting the best, the optimum growth out of your crop. It also reduces environmental damage from runoff, from leaching. It's all about attention to detail. It's about saving money and reducing environmental risk. It's the right product and the right quantity the right time and in the right place.